Claude finally got web search and it changes everything about how I'm using it. I've tested it extensively and I will share three powerful business applications. Plus I'm gonna share five expert prompting techniques for web search that most users are completely missing. These prompting secrets will get you better sources, more accurate data and deeper insights than 99% of users. ChatGPT, Gemini and Grok all have the feature to search the web and Claude was lagging behind, but that changes now. For entrepreneurs and business professionals, this is a complete game changer. Imagine having Claude's reasoning power combined with real time data from the entire higher internet. In this video, I will show you exactly how to set it up and use properly. The techniques I'll teach you are part of my comprehensive Claude mastery system that I've developed after hundreds of hours of testing. Let's dive into how to set up this powerful new feature and start getting better results immediately. As we can see here, Claude can now start to search the web and there is an example of how to use it and how to get started. I will show you how to do that right now. Once you go to Claude.ai and start a new chat, there is an information box that shows you that enable web search and it has a big button right here. If you click on that, you can enable the web search feature right here. It says web search is only available when using Claude 3.7 Sonnet. I'm gonna select turn this on and now web search is enabled and I'm good to go. If you don't see that this is enabled, go over to your account and go to settings. Go to profile and then scroll down and you will see featured preview. And this is where web search and analysis tools are an option that you can enable. In this case, I enabled them both. One important note though, currently this feature is only available for paid Claude users in the United States, but Anthropic has confirmed that it's coming to free users and also to international markets soon. The first game-changing application that we're gonna cover is doing comprehensive customer and market research. This is perfect for entrepreneurs validating ideas, businesses entering new markets, or product teams seeking insights. Watch what happens when I use this advanced prompt that incorporates all five of my pro web search prompting techniques. And by the way, this prompt is in the description so you can use it there. I'm gonna paste it in here. It says, conduct a comprehensive analysis of the no-code, low-code automation tool markets within the past six months. And then I have a list of things that it should incorporate. So I'm gonna select enter and have it research that for me. And you can see here, it searched, uh, had 10 different results. Then it compared them and looked for top trending tools. It did another search of 10 different websites. And then it went into the third section and also searched this now and it is doing that as long as it doesn't have all of the information that it needs. As soon as it thinks it has all of the information that it needs, it starts writing in the format that you've requested it to return the information. As you can see my prompt, I ask for direct citations to the sources published and it does it right here where it includes it in the text. And this is the power of using various precise prompts. So in this case, it gives me the current market size and growth potential. It looks for valid citations such as Statista and then it goes into certain um, tools like the appbuilder.dev and looks in different blogs for the information that we were looking for. And let's look into the top trending tools on adoption rates. I am not using Microsoft Power Apps as much, so I'm going to start to look into that. But what I was hoping for here was probably to see NADN or make.com, which is great. But I've been using NADN a lot recently and I don't see it on here. So I would probably ask a follow up question. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna ask, tell me where NADN falls within that information you just researched. And let's see how it is answering at this time. It still has the context window of its previous searches. And on top of that, it also does a web search for NADN no code automation tool market position trends in 2025 and is looking through a few answers right here. It gives you the market position and how it compares to the other tools that it just looked at. So let's go back up here. And the last thing to note here is that it went through all of the four points that it asked it for and did an extensive analysis. So now all of this is in the context window within Claude and you can ask it to write an in-depth article about this. All right, now that we have all this information, uh, load it in the context window of Claude. Let's ask it to write an in-depth um, article with it. You can either say, turn this into a blog post or I'm gonna be more specific because I want the blog post to do well. So I'm going back to my prompt guide here and I'm going to the blog writing section and I'm gonna copy and paste this prompt. All right, so it misunderstood me and it thought that I was talking specifically about NADN. I want to talk about all of the no code, low code tools. So I'm following up and I'm saying, sorry for the misunderstanding. I want you to write a comprehensive article about no code, low code automation tool market, not just N8N. So I'm gonna uh, hit enter and it's not gonna rewrite the article for me. 
and it uses all of the information that it just researched and has up-to-date trends up to 2025. And it is writing an in-depth report here for the market trends so that I could share this with my team or I could share that with one of my customers to share with them what automation tools I recommend them to use. Now that you know how to do in-depth research, let me show you how to use Claude Web Access to make technology decisions within your business. The second use case I'm gonna show you is how to do an AI tool comparison and selection. So the prompt is gonna be to create a detailed comparison of AI transcription and summarization tool released or significantly updated in the past three months. And then I have some additional information here that makes this prompt extra valuable. And it says, looking at the accuracy rates, pricing model, privacy and data handling policies. And here is again, my special sauce, which says present perspectives from individual creators, small business users and enterprise users, include direct citations to relevant reviews, benchmarks and company announcements from December, 2024 through March, 2025, which is when I'm filming this video. When reporting accuracy claims, please verify them against independent testing sources uh, where possible. So this makes it all search the web. So let's, let's do this example and paste that into Claude. And here is the results. It came up with a comparison of the different transcription tools, found uh, Node.ai, Sonics, TurboScribe, Ref, and then it looks at the different points that I ask it to look into further. Looking into performance with accents and audio quality, uh, I ask it for the pricing models, the integration capabilities, so all of this is super extensive. And I found a lot of information from data that is newer, right? Because Node.ai is improving on their platform and then all of these different uh, tools like Fireflies AI, Sonics, um, they are all changing every single month. So a lot of these sources are more recent. At this point, you could ask it follow-up questions, but I'm not gonna do that because I wanna show you one third use case before I share with you the five things that you need to include to make all of your prompts with web space search more powerful. And the third example that we're gonna cover is how to do a content strategy and trend analysis for either your business or if you have a YouTube channel or a personal brand, how to use that. So in this case, I'm gonna ask it to uh, analyze current trends in the AI business automation niche from uh, January 2025 to present and uh, include top performing content. And I'm gonna ask it the same detailed uh, questions here in order to get the best, most accurate information. I'm gonna copy this text and gonna paste that into a new chat. It asked me if it should search the web. And in this case, yes, for sure. That's exactly what I wanna demonstrate here. So yes, please search the web and it will go off and search the web. And it looks like it did the web search here, did look for 10 results here, 10 results there, 10 results here. So it looks like it's hard coded in there that uh, Claude for each specific research question looks for 10 different sources, which is different than ChatGPT, which sometimes looks for more if you do deep research. So here it gives me the answer to all of my questions. Uh, it puts together a detailed report on the AI business automation content trends. I will read this later, but overall, it's amazing that I don't need to use Google or perplexity in order to do all of this analysis now. Now that you've seen these three examples, let me show you the five things that I include in most of my prompts in order to get web-based search to perform properly and be more powerful. And these steps are fairly straightforward, but it's important to include them in your prompt. The first thing is that I specify a specific time period. I usually try to include explicit timeframes like within the past six months or from January 2025 to present, and this will ensure the current information that I'm looking for. And this is also a trigger word for Anthropic or for Claude to ask you if it should search the web or not. You can also ask it directly to search the web, but if you ask for specific time periods, it looks for information within that time period. The second thing is to request direct citations. This is helpful if you want to go back to the source and clarify any specific information if it's correct and if it's from a trusted source. The third thing is to request multiple perspectives. For example, you should ask for different viewpoints. For example, from a uh, present perspective from stakeholder one or stakeholder two. In my example, I gave um, the prompt here where I asked for the perspective of individual creator and small business users and enterprise users to get different information. The fourth thing is to include structured follow-up questions. So I'm requesting Claude to organize information in a way that facilitates targeted follow-ups. The fifth thing that is really important is to have a verification protocol. So for critical information, explicitly ask Claude to verify across multiple sources or note any contradictory information. This is a cross-check in order to make sure that Claude is really giving you accurate information and it's not just pulling fake news from x.com or Twitter and then it's 
returning that. So take a screenshot of this if you wanna use this as a template, but this is the prompt that I'm using with my web-based search for Claude that is very powerful. I'm asking for conduct a comprehensive analysis of a specific topic and then within the past and then I give it the time frame. I usually ask it to give me a few key points. So I say include and then key point or metric to research, specific trend or development to explore, pain point or challenge to address, and then future projection or opportunity to identify. And then I give it these different things here, present perspective from different stakeholders, stakeholder one, two, and three. And then I'm saying include direct citations to sources published since, and then I ask for a specific date that is recent. For any conflicting information or claims, please verify across multiple sources and explain any discrepancies. And as you can see here, all of my example prompts follow the same structure and they give me really solid results. Claude Web Search fundamentally changes how you can use AI for business research and decision making. Is it a Google killer? I don't think so, but it definitely helps me streamline some of my processes with research when I use Claude. I've included the prompts used in this video for free in the description so you can access it by clicking on that link there. If you want to go beyond the basic prompts I showed you for web search and master all the aspects of Claude, from document analysis to coding assistant to creative content creation, data analysis, and so much more, I've created this comprehensive Claude mastery guide. This contains everything I've learned from hundreds of hours of testing, and I'm using Claude every single day. If you found this helpful, give this video a like, subscribe if you want to get more helpful content for anything related to AI and automation. And if you use LMs for your businesses every single day and you want to get the most out of them, you need to watch this video next.